Okay, so I'm recording here. I'm here with Matias, and um, we're talking about the wiki, doing Infobox templates for the OSE wiki as we finally restructure and get our wiki infrastructure up to speed so that it's an easy to collaborate platform. One of the good things to do is to do info boxes just like these examples so that you can have links to all the relevant material. Some of the critical things are we want to produce instructionals on how anyone can use these these info boxes. Uh, Matias suggested a graphical inf interface for wiki editing, which we tried some time ago. It wasn't that good before, but now it appears to be better. We want to embed videos in a temp info box. We want to have folding. The example of folding is like this here, where you click expand and more, more content ex extends so that you can have a very complex info box, not just a very small one. So here's the idea for info boxes. They can be placed on any single page, and, and it would be nice to have that as the entry page for any project and we're talking about either one of the 50 machines or we can be talking about subparts of machines such as here's an assembly a smaller assembly or just just the motor assembly or whatever so we can use the info box templates at any level including higher and lower so the typical one is is a machine one of the 50 a larger one would be a machine ecosystem, like a product ecology. Um, what's a product ecology? Uh, there's a page, product ecologies. There could be an info box where we treat the ecology of things, like on the product ecologies page, as the system that we're developing. That means you're focusing on how the things relate to one another. Or you can go smaller than a machine, which is a module, such as a universal rotor. Or you can have even smaller modules or parts, like here's the bolt, or you know, bolt and nut set, or a wheel. So you can go as high or low as, as needed, and the beauty of the modularity is that many people can get involved in parallel as long as you define the interfaces clearly. So the idea is that if we do a wiki page, we encourage anybody to use the Infobox template to make a summary. We encourage people to post a short video update in there. Now, what about showcasing, the concept of showcasing uh, a bunch of different people's work? Because part of the, the benefit of, a, of an online platform is that people can see your work, and that's, that's part of the reason why you get motivated to contribute, because people can see your work, and, and that motivates others to contribute to to your project and you can make links with other projects on the on the same platform but if you take a for example um, there's an interface there's a thing called what is it open builds so if you look at open builds open builds is an interesting case of what, what I call the showcasing so what you have for openbuilds.org is you have a bunch of projects that you click on and what I think we can do readily uh, short of having an open builds platform look at that they basically showcase a bunch of projects and that's kind of the vision for what the info box in the simplest implementation could be an attractive graphic some basic information, maybe some icons that classify the thing as a in a category. Like if you look at open builds, it's pretty nice. They have category XY table CNC mills, category everything else. They have nice little icons. But if we can include an icon, uh, actually that would be a nice thing to to have in this basic module template on page two icons um, we already show like icon for status and future work contributors and users project uh, there's module name icon we could use that if there's a picture and a small icon maybe that icon could be something like a category of what this is about like if it's related to housing if it's related to energy if it's related to food production or whatever but I, I like the open builds that's a nice nice industry standard for what a, an attractive platform looks like. I'm just going to copy, um, take a screenshot of that because it's actually very useful to, 
to show that. Um, does that make sense as far as the the open builds platform? That's pretty attractive. Yep. Um, but we can simulate something like that pretty much readily using just info boxes. So the the general concept here is that okay, well we can spend a year of development time developing open builds. Or maybe even their software is open source. I don't know. It actually would be interesting to see if it were. Um, that's actually a, a, could be an interesting thing. But I'm, I'm assuming it's not. Because a lot of these things, uh, even though it's open builds, there's few projects that are open source at every level. So you probably don't have access to this template. Because, of course, that's their revenue model. Um, but we can simulate one using very simple wiki techniques. The general idea is that we use the wiki and basic embeds and other tools to make widely accessible, widely replicable formats that people can use. So if we can develop this um, template that can be, as on page one, a bunch of different wiki pages with a gallery of info boxes, that could be our poor man's version of open builds. So. Um, let me put in a slide two. So, example of showcase of gallery. Uh, in quotes, gallery of info boxes. So let's just paste that in there. No, wrong one. What happened to that one? Uh, let's try that again. Desktop. Okay, so here we've got a, a sample gallery of info boxes. So that's the idea. Um, now, Matias, what would it take to do that? That would be an HTML skin or like a CSS skin to make it happen? Well, uh, question is... Uh, mm, how do we implement that in Wiki? create info box for some project uh, then uh, you have to go to this gallery and uh, have this project also here or uh, your idea is uh, that this uh, gallery will um, automatically take uh, all info boxes and create this, uh, this uh, gallery well I, I think it appears that the simplest way to implement that would be just a gallery right yeah. Uh, if if you just gallery, then uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can do it. But uh, mm -hmm. maybe first uh, we need to implement uh, this uh, info boxes for for uh, all uh, for all uh, projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I can uh, take uh, these info boxes and make this gallery from uh, some uh, bit simpler version of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And if we want to get more advanced, we can do that for later. But if we want to format it in a more attractive way, then it would be more than a gallery. The simplest, very simplest would be just using a gallery, which has no formatting, just very basic. But yeah, let's do that. So that, that would be good. Um, yeah. So as far as WebGL, so I'm going to actually announce this since we're going to publish this video. Uh, so for WebGL, the secondary priority of, of the Infobox template, and let's let's show an example. So the Infobox template example, um, okay, Matias, please put that on your log, what you did with that, uh, I see. Yep, yep. 
Uh, yeah. What's the link to what page was that on? The example that you showed? Yeah, look at that. So that's an example of a very simple template embedded. Uh, and that looks that looks good in itself. And we can showcase that and probably make them a little smaller, maybe a little. OK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more attractive. Okay. So you can have like. To... Now it's uh, 300 of pixels, so I can uh, change it to 200. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at open builds. They have five across when you have a wide screen. They have like four across and it looks attractive. Three across. Yep. Yeah, and it rearranges nicely. Three or four across would probably be the right thing to do. Yeah, we should start with three as a basic example. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, very nice. Open builds. That's a good model to go by. Okay. So, what else to cover right now? I was wanted to mention the WebGL example. So, WebGL allows you an embed. So here's the example on page six, under needs. But basically, WebGL is where you embed into an HTML page the output of a, of a graphical file that you can then manipulate in 3D. So just to show an example of how it can be manipulated. But basically, that is embedded as HTML lines. And so that's, that's an example of a WebGL manipulation. That's, this is actually in HTML. You can actually walk in, inside of it. That's our house here where, where I'm in right now in that corner right there I'm right there um, but this is WebGL and it would be nice to have the the info box template have an embed where you can 3d manipulate some kind of a graphical uh, basically the CAD of some part or whatever you module you're working with so it'd be nice to have a module picture of it 3d or that could be the pit instead of the picture it could be the 3d manipulable probably the good thing would be to replace the picture with a 3d manipulable image at some point have an intro video and uh, basic things but but basically just to go over the the module content within an info box you want to have the module name picture about it main things are what's the project about contributors status and future work uh, and that that would be useful to have a roadmap summary development which would be links to key development venues such as forum bug tracker task management etc genealogy is what what this project derives from or former versions product ecology is how that specific product fits with other products in an open ecology join how do you actually join development download and license so download is one of the most important things and license so that people know it's open source and etc. So you, and at the bottom I have learning resources and then more expanded. So and we can make this by doing expansion make it as as complicated as as needed. That's basically um, an outline of what the infobox template is about. We have Matias uh, implementing it for us with a greater goal of having a platform where many people can contribute in a much more easy way than, than it is right now. Once we have this template, we can embed it in wiki pages so that they're just simply better. Just for reference, uh, if we go to... Okay, so so take a look at, for example, CB Press. Let's look at... Look at this um, 
So see this template here. This is something from a long time ago. And this, this is pretty decently useful. It's a, it's a horizontal header across the top. And that, that we've been using for a bit of time. But now with the info box, maybe we can integrate it with this other header. We have to think about how to do that. I think the info box is a better thing. But just for historical reasons, that's how we've done it before. And maybe we can integrate it in a similar way now. But that's that's for later. So one step at a time, info box first. Yeah. Maybe first we need some uh, uh, some uh, structure of uh, of pages for every project because yeah. here is some uh, structure with all research bill of materials. But right. maybe with uh, info box template mm -hmm. we want to change this structure. Yeah. Or uh, if we want same structure, then uh, we need some uh, links to this old structure from info box templates. Maybe it could be nice to have some document about about this structure and how to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should do we should do a structure like the base structure is. I mean, in the simplest simplest platform, you have about you have bill of materials, how to build, and then CAD files. It's almost what this kind of refers to the bill of materials the build instructions uh, so like bill of materials and build instructions are absolutely critical there's down file downloads and there's about maybe we could simplify it to that level or or maybe just include include kind of like how this is the thing is um, here's the idea the there's many different audiences that come to this platform. So I think the answer is we have different versions of this for who is looking at this. So if you're heavy on, on the development part, then you, you focus this template on development, the R&D part, which there's a whole bunch of steps in there. Uh, for a casual user, all they want to do is here's the download and here's the build instructions, really. And bill of materials. I mean, maybe we should focus it on that. Um, you know, download bill of materials, build instructions. So you can do different ways. Here, we're trying to incorporate all the different things. Now, the the development template is what you, one really has to. Um, for example, this development template, like here. So we have that kind of a structure. In the most comprehensive sense, in a development template. So maybe what we could do is do a a smaller version of this that pretty much once okay the thing is once we have the what I would do is do the info box template first as a matter of strategy and then we can modify once we have the instructions for how to work with info box template then we can make numerous templates and test out which one works the best and con continuously evolve it but there's major headings like there's design, there's research and development, like background and research. There's the build materials, there's the build and data collection. That's more that that kind of a structure is more for the developer side. Like okay, data collection, background and research. So maybe there's like two major ones, one for a developer and one for a user. There's, so it depends on on which but I think what we should do is we should propose okay here's a sample here's a proposed example so I would suggest Matias if you wanna let's, let's start a page here um, maybe we can start it at the roadmap for the OSC wiki here so maybe let's do that um, let's start drawing in some bubbles Okay, so so start with info box template. And then we want to go to I would say we have um, so then there's the showcase which is the um, gallery. Um, 
So gallery is one that's basically the showcase. Then we can say we have a a development infographic in, in, info box. I think there's basically like three main ones. There's the, there is the info box template, which is the kind of like the summary of the project. There will be the development info box, and there's the user user info box for those. What do you think? Yeah, I think it uh, makes sense. Maybe some. A switch between uh, development and infobox. Maybe I think um, we need some. Uh, if uh, we will have some uh, amount of uh, of uh, builders, I think uh, that we need some uh, forum for support of uh, builders and also for uh, reporting of uh, of issues with. Right. With, uh, There's a. So now you, I mean, there's a much bigger question of the development template, the deve development process in general. So, yeah. so basically, maybe draw two hours. So, development process. I mean, that includes a few missing links that we haven't implemented, but we want to integrate, including logins. How do you do proper login if we have a multiple platforms? I, I, uh, we want to get this right. So, so development process that would have a number of things that would have your forum um, basically the upvotable so I'm going to make that clear upvotable, upvotable form so like stack overflow um, yeah. there's a q and I think one very powerful I've been thinking about this quite a bit but one powerful thing could be that Either the forum is the Q Q and A, or the Q and A is is separate. But the concept is that the Q and A is a very powerful way to upvote and find answers. Like for example, what's the best way to make bulldozer tracks that do not wear out if they're all made of metal? You know, that's a technical question. Um, this would be Stack Overflow style. We need the Stack Overflow for this. The forum is more more the discussion, um, but let's continue because there's there's a few other elements. There's a bug tracker. Yeah. What else are we missing? There's of course the wiki. Um, and social media. Wiki. I think a uh, big uh, uh, challenge is uh, a link between all these, all these uh, tools, and uh, <coughs> make users to to use all these tools uh, properly. Right. I mean that's a huge challenge, right? So, yeah. um, on form, what is topic for stock overflow? What's the bug? What to write on a wiki? Maybe some uh, document the, for for newcomers. Yep. I don't know. So there's a crash. So so for that, some of the meta level steps are: we need a crash course. So basically, crash course on OSC um, let's let's get th these royal purple like, like that so crash course CAD training so CAD training is a big one uh, I mean there's more de more advanced stuff like a, like rapid prototyping training and we're gonna do this that has to come out by the time the book comes out in about eight months 
So that means I'm just going to be a little more specific here. Um, but what I'm thinking there, so so there is 3D printing, scanning, laser cutter, CNC torch table. Uh, reverse engineering within free ca within CAD. Like, how do you take? We we need to be able to fully reverse engineer. Like, we have this hydraulic motor. We want to do an open source version. We want to reverse engineer it first on paper, and then on on prototypes like three D printing. Um, since we cut out most of our work with flat from flat sheet using CNC torch table. We want to design a lot of things to be manufacturable like that. Um, I think uh, multi machine is a really important tool because uh, yeah. without multi machine, um, you can just yeah. Yep. You just need it. Yeah, and that falls out of the three D printer, uh, basically CNC machining construction set, which the three D printer is the the very humble beginnings of. And probably you want a little, probably a little circuit mill device. Um, circuit mill, which would be part of the multi machine. But I'm, for multi machine, I'm thinking about heavy, heavy duty machining. So, yeah. um, so yeah, circuit mill. So a really nice project. It's a um, tool which can. Uh, it's a circuit circuit milling. But it have also um, optical head for uh, for uh, photo photosensitive layer because uh, I think for really small small PCBs uh, um, I think uh, milling is not the best option. I think. Uh, with uh, with uh, photosensitive layer is uh, much better. Uh, so do a photosensitive layer that you etch. Yeah. Uh, show me. Do you have a link for that? Can you paste it in yeah. there? Give me a second. Yeah, cir circuit mill could be good for some things, like maybe I don't know. I mean, I don't really know. Like maybe larger electronics, like power electronics, where the boards are like for say 10 kilowatt power supply units, like induction furnace power supplies, etc. That might be. I don't know. I, I don't have enough experience on that to know what the best route to rapid prototype power electronics would be yet. Um, what else? So, yeah, one part of the development, yeah, if you put that link, one part is using the library files for construction set workbenches. Um, I'm going to put that there construction set workbenches in FreeCAD. Social media. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to put the embeddable WebGL as a separate thing because that's... we really need to master our ability to display um, graphical or 3D CAD information. We really need to do that well. So, okay. Let's see. You got. You looking for the link? WebGL embeds. Yep. Okay. Um, can you find it? 
Yep, you have it in some um, some chat. Uh, pa pasted. There's a upper left hand corner of the Google Hangout is a chat box. Yeah, yeah, okay, I heard about this. That's proprietary, isn't it? Or is it open source? Is this open? Yeah. It's open source. Um, where's the license on that? No, dude, this is not open source, though, I don't think. I've looked into this. this um, let's see. Show me the license. I don't know. CC by NC. Sorry. Can't do it. You know why the NC, we can't work with NC? No. Well, first of all, it's, it's not open source according to the open source definition, but the second practical thing is if we do things by running workshops, where people build things so that means that uh, people can manufacture that build it for sale as well so yeah uh, it's something similar we can do but um so we can take the idea but can't can't really use that that's uh, but we can use the idea like for example in um probably in um, open builds there might be something similar to that yeah yeah Um, I'm going to send you this thing, uh, NC, okay, here, you, you need to read this, so read that in your spare time, it's about NC licenses, why we can't use those, um, yeah, so, so, as you see the, okay, I got to get going soon, but the thing is, the development process is much more complicated. We can start with the info box. As far as the structure for what the wiki can have, so there's the development template, and then the, what I would suggest is that from the development template, we select, and that's, I mean, I, I think that's forkable or like welcome contributions, but show an example of a, of a sample page that, that has the right structure, and we can try to implement that and see what, what sticks essentially but we have just about all the content within the development template and from that we can talk about okay now how do we display it so I'm gonna just put development template as one other item here in the development process yeah Um, we'll just link to the development template. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the thing is. Yeah, um, our roadmap, start with info box template, go to the showcase, and then development info box, user info box. I think that would be a good start, so that when the with the user info box, we focus everything basically on attractive display so that people can download and use stuff. For the development, it's more the messy stuff about R&D and calculations etc um, the gallery showcase could be a, a good thing to orient people that's that I think is easy to implement just a simple info box template so yeah we should just do an example of uh, yeah yeah just do examples along the way mm -hmm. so with that said mm, what else do we need to cover today Maybe 
<coughs> can talk about uh, uh, visual editing plugin for okay. uh, for Wiki because I think it's really really important. Okay, well let's test it. So, so I would say the task there would be let's document the procedure. So, so on the needs page here, um, graphical interface there is on page six. I would say document how to install this, and and uh, we'll do it, and let's test it again. Uh, can you document therefore how to do it? Because the, the thing is, uh, just the general idea is, as the project grows, we'd like to have a, a number of different people replicate their own projects, and f for which reason we document how, like if, you, if we're going to set up the graphical interface, okay, how do you do that for, for your, your own project? Because we want it to be, like, even if it's something not related to OSE, we want to show templates and, and be, a, be a repository of how you do different things related to setting up a, an organization. So that's why you want to document that. Mm -hmm. yeah, for I us, think, uh, process should be um, quite good documented on uh, MediaWiki because right. it's it's uh, official plugin, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, Can you maybe first uh, we need to uh, upgrade MediaWiki, and uh, for me it's uh, I can probably. Uh, made some uh, process how to do it without some uh, testing copy of uh, of wiki to to make process on uh, not uh, not official official copy of, of media wiki because mm -hmm. there can be some some issues yeah and uh, yeah we need to uh, solve it uh, not on uh, on uh, live project. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. It, there's going to be documentation, and the, the concept is that we adapt that documentation for a specific use case, so it's it's easier for people. Um, if you can do some of that on your log, that would be good. So yeah, so you want to test it out on a on a separate install somewhere? Yeah, it uh, it uh, would be nice. Do you have space where you can do that? Yeah, I have space. I have space and I can do that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, if it's possible for you to, to make uh, export of uh, database and uh, and FTP of of Wiki. Uh, we could try that. Uh, okay. In that case, it it would be great to have independent copy to to make all testing mm -hmm. would be really great. Okay. I can run it on my web server and uh, then I can uh, uh, make some uh, document how to how to do it and how to uh, how to install and uh, you can uh, make it on uh, on uh, your media wiki. Yeah, that would be, be good. Maybe it's a, it's a best solution. We can uh, uh, in a, some night, you can make copy of of wiki, upgrade it, and if it uh, will be okay, then we can uh, copy this uh, new new version and replace old one. Yep. Okay. The best thing, yeah, to fa facilitate it for us here, you can document how you're doing that, so we can pretty much don't have to do all the research like you're gonna do. Yeah. So we can time bind that. Yeah. Mhm. Mm That'll be great. Let's do it. So first thing, can you do the? So what, what's your priority then? Do the uh, info box first, or do the do the graphical interface first? I really like to do graphical first because uh, there's also um, some graphical tool for uh, for templates, and okay. then you can uh, just uh, fill some some form and uh, make new new templates without all. All messy, messy thing. Okay. So now, um, MediaWiki, they use the, they use the graphical interface, right? Yep. Um, 
And that's because it's easier for that's users? Cool. Yeah, it's easier for users and uh, also there's uh, uh, drag and drop uh, uploading of files and uh, it's really great because uh, uh -huh. images with... I see, so it make it easier. Okay, so yeah. let's see. Uh, first you need to log in. So, for example, um, just click on uh, edit. Mm -hmm. So, no, that's not it, and I don't know. Mm, give me a second because it's strange because on my side we have this. Do you have experience with the Semantic Media Wiki extension? No, I don't have uh, experience, but uh, I can uh, install it on uh, on Media Wiki. But uh, yeah, I saw some videos about it, but uh, mm -hmm. I have no experiences. Okay. We can you open? Uh, it's fun because I have their graphical editing. I'm not sure. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I can uh, share my screen. Mm -hmm. It will be easiest way. my screen okay so uh, I have here two options first is uh, edit source for <coughs> typical source editing in uh, media wiki syntax and second option is edit and uh, I can uh, yeah just So mm. just upload some uh, some file from from my computer. Yeah. Yeah. Another option is uh, temp at template. So you're that's from that's from templates that have already been created. Oh, so it allows you to do that right off there. That's pretty useful, right? Yeah, it's just great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some graphical and so on and so on. Okay. Do you know if yeah, anybody's... I this is the way out. Yeah. How to go. Let's see what it says for WebGL and MediaWiki. Oops. Sorry, let's look at WebGL and MediaWiki. Uh, there's the how to do it. First is some uh, obsolete plugin. Uh, it's from uh, 2012 and uh, it's in 
in a experimental phase, so I don't know. And the section, second option how to do it is uh, just with uh, uh, with inserting of of frame with uh, yeah some uh, some iframe. I think yeah. it uh, it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The question. We should just start doing it now, so you can actually manipulate it. Let's see examples. Let's see examples. Let's see if we have any. How does that work? Can you find any examples? I want to see if it actually works. You can actually manipulate it. And how, how powerful it is. Um, let's see, let's go to our wiki. We, maybe we have something on that already. WebGL. No, just the micro house WebGL. No. WebGL enabled browser. Well, Firefox, Chrome. Let's see demos. WebGL 2. See, I want to see some demo. Oh, wow. That is pretty good. Look at this. Yeah, no, it's, it looks like it's all, look at that. I mean, that's all we need for now. Okay, I think uh, I have solution. Wow. Mm-hmm. Let's see this bug here, for example. Oh man, that is great. No problem, that is a lot of detail and it's super fast. Huh. You see that? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, if you look on the link, which I sent you, I think, uh, yeah, just embed this is uh, just a uh, solution for us. Whoa, yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Wiki page That's, works. It's running off somebody else. There's some trickery involved there, right? Because this guy you got some other functions there like explode the roof for example you see lower the walls um, so yeah if we could learn to do this I mean that's that's some extra programming right that's that's a little more than mm-hmm yeah no this is great we that is beautiful yeah okay well we can get so can we get that into the info box so we can actually manipulate um yeah, of course. Okay, okay, can you can you okay. show the the sample one? Can you embed that one in in a sample info box and see how it lo looks? We might not be able to do this whole yeah. thing cuz it's too big, but maybe something smaller. Yeah. 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 Okay. Nice. Wow, this is our wiki. All right. Excellent. secondary we should move that webgl to primary i think i think it, it's all capable there it's about i guess having a an effective exporter because i looked at freecad freecad has webgl export if you go in there however i'm not sure the webgl exporter is really good in freecad but i think that's a function of yeah. freecad not not the technology so maybe we can uh Wonder what the latest development on FreeCAD is on that. 
So let's see. Um, you know, so say I got this. How can I file export? Let's see. Does it have a WebGL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's let's do that right now. File name ball dot html let's see if that worked um, where did it go export to desktop ball Okay, ball.obj, no what? Uh, file. Ball. Ball.html, okay, so let's see. Let's see if that works. Let's see if I embed it. Is it gonna show in the media wiki? Open with so I'm going to put that. Let's see, ball web GL. No, I mean, it's not showing up. What do I do wrong? Do I have to put in a frame? Can you maybe share, share for me this link? Um, can you see? Now that is good. So, let's see. Do you see this? Edit. What libraries do I need? Uh, That's something in MediaWiki? Okay. No, no, no. Because um, I have to look on uh, source code. Put there, but. Uh... Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, let's not do that right now. Let's document that for everybody. But yeah, I think we can handle this uh, without a problem. I need to get going, though. I got to plant out 10,000 nuts about <laughs> in about a month from now. We're getting those all prepped up. Maybe, uh, can we review task? Yep. From, okay, from mm hmm Yeah, so priority would be, so So number one would be the, do the graphical interface. I'll, we'll send you, we'll have to send you, follow up with sending you a dump of the database. I think it's a, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, so I need to email Tom on that. Ah, uh, sorry. So we'll do the,
So graphical editor. Sorry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so graphical editor, so that would be the roadmap. Graphical editor, info box template, showcase gallery. Um, let's try to, so we should put, should we try to put WebGL in here? Activate WebGL? Yep. And can you do the fold out? Fold out, folding? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. So folding would be another milestone there. Mm -hmm. Video, that's that should be easy. Um, but think about the instructionals all the time because uh, only we could use it unless we have the instructionals. So. I want to make this un some instructions after uh, we switch into visual visual editing. Okay. Or I can uh, I can make some uh, instructions for for you because it's uh, it's easy if you like to um, add these info boxes in uh, in uh, in some existing projects. It's it's easy to do so. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, but some uh, bigger uh, bigger instructions for for everybody. I think. Uh, Wait until we it's get it. It's better to do it on a visual version. Okay, okay. okay. I agree. So we'll take care of the, all these other things on this all these uh, crash courses and rapid prototyping crash course training yeah we're gonna have to get the there's good open source laser scanners um, we're working on a 3d printer we gotta get the CNC torch table up um, but within eight months mm, I don't know how much of that we'll get within eight months we'll see what we can but we want to plan on around the next publicity hit when a book is out. Yeah, I think it's uh, really important because yeah, uh, it seems that you have uh, really few few active people now. Yep. At least on a on a weekend. Yep. So it's it's important to to do it right. Yep, that's right. Let's do it. Maybe I want to ask uh, which is uh, a relationship between uh, between you and uh, another. OSC organization like uh, OSC Europe and Italy and uh, Germany. Yeah, um, so there's France that's active right now. We talk to them. It's pretty much uh, there's really no no basic standards there. We, we've talked about some standards with o OSC India and OSC France. Yeah. Um, the relationship is about collaborating on technical development but but those links are pretty loose right now there's not much uh, not much formal organization between that what I would like to see happen is that we collaborate on the platform development with those different groups so we really need a person who would be a chapter manager which we don't have um, it's just about resources to make these things more effective but I think with this platform once we have more of the platform in place we can encourage people to adopt that as standards that we can collaborate more with um, that's the idea does that explain it or maybe we... yeah, sorry. yep go ahead yeah, I think uh, that. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you consider to have uh, some uh, some manager for for every project? Of course. Like. Uh, yeah. 
Of course, the answer is yes. However, um, who actually steps up to the plate and do we have a process to do that? Right now, we haven't... Um, I mean, it's really about people who can commit regular time. I mean, what's happened a lot of times is that some person comes in and then they drop off. So retention is an issue. Uh, the next step on that is getting do an active recruiting for this kind of stuff where we set better inf we create better infrastructure and create uh, more clear expectations and have people as managers of different projects so and typically the way it works is that people basically once people actually do stuff then they they kind of rise in authority just like in an open source project it's a meritocracy once people have show that they're doing stuff then they rise up to different roles yeah we have we do have a decent project manager for uh, for the power cube work which is tom griffin that's that's a technical area of development that is going forward um, other than that we don't really have project managers for any other the projects um, so we need to build that up i mean basically we need a product owner for each one now the the thing is when we were starting to talk about revenue generation how do we keep people around well that's if we generate revenue from some of the enterprises that come out of this and that hasn't happened yet but the thing next step is to uh, as the distributive enterprises get enacted that's when you're going to have people that can continue development because it's their livelihood and that's that's the way it has to happen because right now it's just too much too many too many people coming and going the continuity is not there uh, in a broader sense it is on a smaller scale but on a wider we're you know talking about thousands of people or hundreds or thousands no it's not there yet it's people just come and go so mm -hmm. does that explain that yep yep mm -hmm. yeah so i mean the biggest thing is getting some of the products into a robust enough state that they're that they're marketable products that can be sold we, we think that the workshop model is the way to go forward um, because that can basically reinventing local production around the open source framework that's what has to happen so it means production workshops physical facility as well as just regular workshops in other locations that can produce real products that are as high in quality as as those from big companies so it's that's doable it takes it takes some uh, more development to make it happen but you know the interesting thing is i mean i want to see what your take on this i mean to to get a lot of people around the development of one product is very difficult i mean people are just not thinking that way people are just okay well let's do this one project this other project but nobody really wants to come around to say okay let's just focus on this thing and make it a big economic thing uh, well, what's your comment on that what's your in a, in a way or yeah I mean why people because there's like any single product that can be developed by a collab collaborative effort can become a very powerful and dominant product like a 3d print like an open source 3d printer that actually is open source in the enterprise level as well for example how come nobody has come up with a distributive enterprise 3d printer one that can be taken on readily by other groups that is also of the top quality you know i guess we can talk about joseph prusa but I mean that business model. Yeah, people can try that, but you have to start from scratch on the enterprise front. So how can we how can we facilitate the startup? Um, how come people are not excited about that? Because I I just don't find a lot of people understand that or like are interested in that. In a in a I just wanted to see if you have any opinions on how to how to make that happen because that's that's what we want to make happen it's like okay let's just get enough people around a certain project and that becomes a marketable product that can be repli replicated widely i guess like with um, open source the equivalent of open source software the equivalent of that is a product is developed and then there's hundreds or thousands of consultants that actually support that product well for us that support is actually building the product so basically manufacturing so where is the equivalent of the open source software happening for that in hardware? That just has not happened. 
and the we think that is the distributive enterprise but nobody's really uh, it's not taken off yet so that's the next milestone I think for the open source hardware community yeah well that's that's our goal Is uh, much easier than a uh, tractor, and uh, lots of people want want a uh, three D printer, and uh, maybe I don't know, I don't know. Maybe uh, about community about three uh, D printers is uh, maybe a bit uh, unique because uh, uh, people who build. Uh, 3D printers is the same group of uh, DI buyers who can uh, work on, on this project. Because, but uh, I'm not sure if uh, it's uh, like if it's same in a, in a, another hardware hardware part. But I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the the thing is the first really good distributed enterprise product. I think can make econ huge economic impact, and it hasn't happened with a three D printer because it's still uh, every company is there on its own. It's not a distributive model like in a software where uh, it's just a different model. It's yeah. we have to create it for hardware and and make make a model that actually can spread to many people based on a common kernel. Yeah, it just hasn't happened yet, but it will, probably within the next, well, next year or two. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Okay. Uh, do you have what you need to go on right now? Yep, I was to do email that I want the dump of uh, database and... Uh, files from FTP and uh, the rest is uh, clear for me. I okay. will send you some email about my progress and update my org. Okay. Um, that sounds good. Great. Okay, we'll talk soon then. So, um, yep. we'll be in touch. I'll keep following your log. Okay, thanks for talking and we'll continue. Okay, bye-bye.